Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Abundology Podcast. It's one of my favorite times of the year when we get to talk to my good friend, Deborah Norton, who is also my personal astrologer and an astrologer that comes back quarterly to like update us on what to expect. And can you believe it, Deb? We are looking at the last quarter of 2022. I can't. I mean, I, I really do think there's something that they're saying about time speeding up, like legit. So I'm starting to believe that conspiracy theory. <laughs> well, you said we have lots to talk about today. So let's yeah. just dive right in. Yeah, I've got a good list. Um, good. Yeah. So first off, before I get going on what's to come, I thought it might be fun to talk about what is right now. Yes. I've done this before, but it seems like a fun way to sort of usher in the vibes and and the, and the inspiration to you know take our conversation in the right direction. So and there's a cool thing happening today, and and it's been happening and will continue to happen a little bit longer, which is a trine in Earth signs, and a trine means a strong harmonic connection, like harmonic harmonic connection, and so that's between Pluto and Uranus and the North Node and Venus. And so if I were to break down that, what we call an aspect, I would think about the energy speeding in and it's a trine, meaning they're all just happily singing together, perfect three-part harmony. That means all those vibes are headed in those frequencies at you and you get to do with them what you will or let them do to you, which it it happens to all of us. (laughs) (laughs) So what, so what does this look like? Well, we have Venus. So we know it's around your value system, your sense of self-worth, even your money situation, your possessions, things that you own. um, And also um, a a more receptive type energy, as opposed to an aggressive energy like Mars, but uh, Venus is receptive. Um, And, and Venus is a sweetness. So Venus sweetens the pot, so to speak. So there's a little bit maybe more care and empathy available to for us to shower on each other, you know, when our paths cross. But that's being tied to Pluto and Uranus, which are intense, heavier uh, frequencies. Pluto being obviously the heaviest, densest frequency, which means always looking underneath things, always trying to pull back the curtain, always under the next layer of the onion, always below, 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 below. below. Um, And so it's that kind of dense pulling downward. And then Uranus is that is, you know, spinning super high and creating electrical currents and creating inspiration and uh, epiphanies and um, just a general sense of like little restlessness that can also feel like so if I had to classify it this way, Uranus feels like anxiety when it's a little too hot and Pluto feels like depression when it's a little too, well, cold, really. <laughs> and then, but then Venus is up there. So, you know, kind of, she's really up there, kind of like the master of these two energies. And so those are the, I'm not telling you what to do with them, but those are the frequencies that are surrounding us today. And so, you know, it, there might be that you feel a little bit of pull in a darker place, but then you're, you're able to like quickly think of a way to resolve it in your mind with the Uranus energy and the, and the Venus, the, you know, kind of piping down saying, just be nice to yourself, just be kind, just make it easy. And so it might be a great day to release old trauma. Oh. You know, and that's just for the few days this week. While Venus is at a certain degree, she's going to keep moving on past and it's going to break. But that's how astrology works in a real life situation. It's like, you know, granted, I don't look at the sky every day. In fact, I don't even look at it every week sometimes. But since we are sitting here with this moment of time and opportunity, it's like, wow, we might as well talk about the elephant in the room, so to speak. So what what then that leads me into my next topic. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the current retrogrades. And so that is also what's happening right now. Six retrogrades. It's a yeah, lot. That's now, crazy. This happens. This happens probably, I, I haven't looked it up, but I know it happens every few years, but it may happen more often than that. But these particular planets are, um, other than Mercury, are slower moving planets. So those are the ones that really pull on the collective. Whereas the quicker moving planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, 
they really revolve around your, your lived day-to-day -day experience as your person. The rest of the planets pull on you from a collective level. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So we've got one, two, three, four, five slower moving planets all retrograde. That's a lot. And Mercury yeah. is then just like, hey, I'm just going to, you know, put another twist on it. <laughs> and so when, when you look at all these energies, Mercury being the day-to-day -day communication uh, between us and everything, you know, the circuitry in your brain that fires delivering you messages um, to the conversation you had with your boss, to the social media, you know, connection that you made, you know, it's Merc all of that is Mercury. And you've got Jupiter, which is optimism, hope, faith, the future's bright, glass half full, talent, your talents and gifts. Then you've got Saturn, the boss, the taskmaster, the working hard engine, the focus, the ability to just churn out good quality, consistent, good work. Um, and then you've got Uranus, which I talked about being like the source of inspiration and the source of new ideas. And then you've got Neptune, which is the spiritual aspect or the unseen, everything that's floating all around us all the time and all the ways that we're all connected to each other that we can't see with human eyes. So, so all of that. And then Pluto, which I talked about being, I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. <laughs> all moving backwards. So I, that looks different to everyone. But what, when you think about retrograde, you always want to think about the RE, the RE. So all retrograde is rehashing, reliving, reminding, remembering, reprocessing, recharging, refreshing, re, you know, every re, really. And because we've got so many planets involved, you can pretty much throw all of them in there. All of the re's are engaged. So just advantage that and leverage that to, to do you the best good and the most good. It's also with a lot of retrogrades, it's very important time to listen. Oh, because we're getting a lot of messages if we're rethinking, yes. if we're redoing things. Yeah, yes. Imagine all that reverie. Yes. <laughs> a lot of reverie. And reverie is how our guides reach us. Mm. You have to listen for that. You have to. And and you and you know, however that looks for you, if it's a walk or a actual meditation or soak in the tub or just before you're falling asleep, a moment of just reflection. But those, all of that is going to be really valuable for all of us right now. So every re that comes up, don't let it pass by. Don't push it out of your mind. Don't distract yourself. Something comes up for you. Really look at it. Your guides are like, this is a retrograde time. I think with personal opinion here is when God, it's the guide's chance to be like, finally, you're looking at us, you know, over here, we have all this stuff to tell you. You have to know this information before anything moves forward again. Like you, we need a pause and we need a conference, you know, we need a timeout and that's where they really get to work. So imagine how strong that is right now with all six planets. Yeah. How reachable that is. I don't know how you, have you felt that since the retrogrades? Oh, I definitely. Felt. I've, I've been rethinking my whole life. Yeah. You know, like, what am I doing with my life again? What am I, what am I doing? You have, you have Venus retrograde, remember? <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's natural to you. Yeah. But I mean, as a person who um, talks and communes with guides, your guides and other people's guides, I'm curious if these retrograde times is a more fertile time for you. As far as clients and appointments. Yes. Yeah, I am booked up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, totally booked up. And Perfect. everybody's having aha moments. Yes. You know, like, oh, maybe I should get a divorce. Oh, I'm rethinking my career path. Oh, re, yeah. re, 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 re. Yep. Re, 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 re. Yep. yep. Perfect. So you're seeing that play out in the real world, um, you know, with or with not being aware of all of this. I know you do keep keep yourself aware pretty much of astrology, but um, um, it's it's a... I would think golden time for people who do the work that you do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time. It's a good time to be me, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, the, that's always been true. Right <laughs> true. True. I, did I, I don't know if I ever told you that my dream, if I could choose my next incarnation would be to come back as your dog. 
Oh, <laughs> you know what? I think my that's best my dream life. too. <laughs> What's that? I said, that's my dream too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, Jasper. Okay. That's astrology. All right. So that was a lot. I know I just spit up and, and I guess it's, I've been uh, excited about this because I haven't got to talk about this stuff for a while. Um, so overall, what we're entering right now is the season of dying. You know, it's the, it's the way it's the letting go and the, um, and the death all around us in nature. And, and that is, you know, its own reward because it's gorgeous. And, and I don't know about you, but we're not quite there yet. So yeah. Uh, you might be, but we're no, not, not yet. I was, yeah. I thought we might have more trees turning, but not quite yet. Yeah. So we're kind of on the cusp. I, I was deciding what to wear and I was like, this looks pretty summery, but it's got a yellow flower that's leaning towards fall. But I, I don't really feel like I'm going to put on my full fall gear yet. You know, just aesthetically how, how it feels where we are in the seasons right now, but it's right around the corner. And uh, so our only job during this season is to just let it all go. <laughs> just let it all the fuck go. All of it. Like this is a time where you just like, Hey, I had goals this year. You can start to like, oh, maybe check that, you know, mark that one off and move that one to next year. Hey. And it's okay. Yes. That's yes. what used to trip me up with goals is I, I didn't know how I could have a goal and then not meet it. Like, those two things could not exist in my OCD anxious mind until I've learned as I've gotten older, just let that shit go. It's okay. You didn't get there. You didn't do 10,000 steps every day for the entire year or Next even year. Up till now, you know, yeah. or you, whatever it is like silly things to big things, whatever. It's okay to just start to say, okay, that's fine. I'm just going to let that roll you know, there, there is no success without failure. There just isn't, let's face it. And, and if there is, then it's unnatural <laughs> in, some, in some way. So it's just, okay. It's just, okay. It's a relief, a re another reword relief, um, the moment of acceptance. And I, I saw this online and I regret not writing down who said this, but it said to accept death, to relax to the death rattle. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's <was> like, <laughs> wow, that's visceral. And uh, that takes you somewhere. It takes me somewhere. Cause I've actually see- been in the room with someone doing that and dying in front of me. And, and uh, that takes on a whole new meaning to me now. And it's like, I'm going to get emotional just thinking about the beauty of that letting go and of that surrender and of that full on relaxing and just letting it all be what it's going to be. Right. Yeah. And so relaxing into this time then. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. And, you know, people may not be as physically active very soon as the weather starts to shift. So it's time to think about, you know, getting your sweater box out and your blankets out, your extra blankets, and maybe add a few more candles around or like start thinking about lighting your fire. Oh, it's lovely. I love it. <laughs> of it. Um, and yeah, just a sense of relaxing because, you know, you've got to go dormant in stages, just like the, just like the, you know, nature, it, it goes dormant in stages. You don't want to just suddenly be in, in the middle of winter, you know? So we've got to allow the equinox to do its job, that evening out, leveling out, letting a little out, putting a little in and just getting it to the right spot for us. And the more we, we work and live in harmony with that vibe, you know, that's the pagan in me, <laughs> the more that we live in harmony with nature and the, and the um, um, systems of nature and all that you know, order that it follows and allow ourselves to mimic that. I, I just think you're more, feel more alive. Absolutely. And our yeah. bodies are built that way. Yeah. No, our bodies are built to eat seasonally, to slow down in the winter. We have more energy in the summer, all of it. Uh, Yeah. Like we might need to gain a little weight in the winter and that is, that can be okay. And and honestly, it can be okay to just keep gaining weight. It doesn't matter really. But if you think about it cyclically, like, like our physical bodies need maybe more on the bones, you know, to be, to stay warmer. So it's all very natural. Um, and all, all of this to say that I think I've made the point that we're just kind of, you know, slowing down. 
And the retrogrades have just kind of forced that to happen. Um, but we're coming into some really, you know, interesting stuff, including the last, the last hit of the Pluto return of the country. That's coming on. I'm going to jump there. Uh, it's coming. Where are you? Moving back to the U.S. Uh, return, the exact degrees uh, on December 28th and 29th. And what's really interesting about this, Pluto, re- Pluto is retrograding. Pluto is going. I didn't say that. Pluto is retrograding back. So we had the first hit on February 22nd, 2022. And that was the Pluto return. And that coalesced with the hearings. Right. And then now we're on the flip side and things have gone a little, you know, lots have been happening, lots under the scenes, lots more digging, lots more findings. And then when we hit the last hit of this Pluto return, this is finally it, Renee, (laughs) after all (laughs) we've been talking about this transit. I'm so glad. What's really interesting about it is that Pluto is going back in degrees, moving backwards. It's going to hit 34 degrees. Then it's going to hit 33 degrees. That is the degree of our return. Then it's going to hit 32 degrees. And then it's going to turn around right back to 33. Wow. Double hit within day, like right on top of itself. It's bizarre. It's really concentrated. So imagine that's the pivot point is the degree of our return. So again, you know, I hate predictions, but I could be smelling like indictment time, like consequences, like that's what I would look, would, you know, forecast based on the vibes that we might be seeing some sort of conclusion to the, all of it, um, in some major shift in the whole story of Trump. So that, that is exciting. Um, regardless, we, we need to shake that loose. And I'm glad this is happening at the end of the year for all of us, because we're all exhausted and tired from this ordeal, no matter what side you're on. You know, it's just like, okay, we just need to shift out of the, the, we're still in the echo of the insurrection, which is just uncomfortable for everyone. And, and we'll see, we've got the next election coming. So that's going to bring what it is. Um, That time period is in the end of October, like leading right into November. Um, We've got a solar eclipse in Scorpio. So that's a, that's a, you know, I didn't even yeah. have to explain it to you. You're not even <laughs> dead. That's like a ooh, supercharged, like something's going to come out. Something's going to pop, you know. And that's October, the end of October, Deb? Yeah, that's October 25th. Wow. Um, right and, before the midterms a couple exactly, weeks later. That was what yes. my point was. Right before the midterms, there's going to be like more uncovered or more dislodged or more information or n- more action. You know, I was thinking about not to get too political, but this is just such a perfect example of Pluto that I really want to say when I'm thinking about what the new allegations of, you know, selling information to enemies, when we get to like the pure treason of it all, like with a big T, right? Oh, it's such a, a wild poetic thought of the, if you think about the story of our country from beginning to end, and all the finagling and all the, the, the deals that had been made all over all these years, deals and deals and deals and deals, and all the unfair things we've done in the world and all of the tyrannical behavior and all of the ways we've cheated and all of those dark, dark things that Pluto's brought up that we not, none of us can't see anymore. Um, all of that is getting tied up into a ball with a capital T of our own president selling us out. Yeah. Like that is Pluto. (laughs) That (laughs) That is it. So again, I, I don't know what's going to happen to him, but this tells that story in ways, even a month ago, I couldn't have predicted the whole the whole treason part just came out of left field for me. I don't know about anybody else, but that one was just like, oh, now it all slides right into place. Now the story feels complete, you know, that it turns back on itself. The snake is back eating itself. And here we go. Let's try to do better now going forward. You know, the consequences are going to be doled out. And now we get to start thinking about the next wave of our evolution and into next year, which um, is going to bring us um, 
a, a major movement. Uh, Jupiter will be in Aries for the next 12 months, I think, or 18 months or so. And then Saturn, big, this is a big shift. Saturn's moving out of Aquarius finally into Pisces. That's a big one. And we'll talk about that more later. But there's going to be a lot of shifting in the new year. A lot of things ending, a lot of things dying, and a lot then a lot of new configurations of the planets coming forward, which I'm looking forward to looking into seeing what's going to happen. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, anything? Let me see what else pops out that I haven't mentioned. Uh, September 25th, new moon in Libra. Libra is um, a beautiful example of, you know, you know, Japanese art where if you have a flaw in the vase that they fill it with gold, that's Libra. And that becomes more beautiful because of that flaw. I love that. It's such a Libra, you know, uh, frequency. So that is the new moon. So do with that what feels right. Um, Let's see, uh, we've got a, we've got a Mars, Gemini, trying Saturn in Aquarius coming up at the end of September. So that could look like uh, action finally breaks loose on something you've been working hard toward. So anything you've been putting lots of effort and hard work into the Saturn, Mars is going to try and it's going to be like, okay, let's go, let's go. So be ready. That's the end of this month. Be ready for that. Um yeah. And then Jupiter, the last kind of thing that stands out is Jupiter has been retrograding and crossing over from Pisces to Aries and then now back to Pisces again. So that's just going to bring a more um, rather than the Aries, like go get it, start new things, you know, initiate new new plans and new projects. Um, you're, you might get a sense of a false start. once. Mm. Jupiter, so anything you have that's kind of in go mode. Once Jupiter rolls back into Pisces, there might be some delays. Okay. So just be, you know, that's okay. There's always a good reason for it. So just don't fight it, you know? Um, yeah. So that takes us through the rest of the year. Um, so do we have another Mercury retrograde happening this year or is this the last no, this one? this is it. The one we're in now. Okay. Fabulous. But, yeah. Which ends on October 2nd. Um and I have where, oh yeah, it on September 23rd, Mercury moves back into Virgo. So started in Virgo, moved into Libra, now moving back to Virgo. So th- what that is, is Mercury loves Virgo. So that's going to be good for everyone. It's just a little bit more time to reassess and reevaluate any kind of decisions or deals that you've made or anything like that. Just, it's going to give you that chance. Like, oh, I wish I had one more glance at the paperwork. You know, it's yep. going to be like that. Oh, okay. Now it, now it all makes sense. So that's going to be nice. Um, yeah, that's the last retrograde. Uh, and then we're moving into the last eclipses, which I didn't mark down when the lunar eclipse is, but it, it's close to the solar eclipse. Um, that's working the Taurus Scorpio axis, which is life and death. <laughs> <laughs> interesting too that the queen you know is just passed yeah away during this yeah, time too, I, of death uh, and- I haven't gone down that astrology rabbit hole yet I might I haven't decided yet if I want to go <laughs> for me but when it comes to the royal family like I can get like really obsessed so I have to like temper yourself yep. yeah yeah <laughs> but I did hear that it was um that no it was a prediction by Nostradamus Oh, really? I didn't yes, hear that. That's that so fascinating. Die in 2022. I mean, that freaks me. Every time one of those hits, I'm always like, that's so oddly specific. Right. Like, what's going on? I mean, I mean, there's a lot. I don't know how much you're aware of like what's going on in the all around like the woo-woo communities and what people are picking up. I like to like dip my toe in the kind of Dip your toe in the woo. In the woo. Like (laughs) I love the I think I live in the woo, but I'm talking like the woo, woo, woo. You know, the way out there stuff. I find it so interesting what people are talking about. And right now it's all about the Schumann resonance being off the chart again. Yeah. Uh, And that people are really, really doing a lot of TikToks on old so signs that were on a different timeline, which 
I don't know if you've gotten into the whole timeline. Yeah, well, uh, clearly I, t- I talk the gu- with the guides often about timeline. Yeah. So yeah, briefly yeah. clarify this. So are you this. interested? Okay, since we have yeah. time, might as yeah. well, right? Let's have some fun. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, the, so a good example of it, it and I, can, I kid you not, unless these people are making it up, I can't explain it. They come on and they'll be like, okay, so, and they, they're they liking, they're linking all of this to the Mandela effect. Okay. You are probably aware of, and yep. most people are by now. And so they're saying this is a different kind of Mandela effect. So I'll give you a great example. Here is a mirror. I love this mirror. It's a cute little design. I remember I got it in a store in Multnomah Village. And uh, there, I only have one and I've only ever had one and uh, I love it. And I look at it all the time and then they'll, so they'll go. So I was looking in a box in the garage for something and, and in the bottom of the box was this mirror. And then they'll hold both of them up and be like, I never had two of these. Oh, fascinating. So, so timelines kind of colliding or crossing. I mean, wow, what is that? Because yeah. do not these people are believable. They do not seem like they're faking it. They're generally baffled. I'm an empath. I can re- generally tell if someone's putting on an act. These are really seem believable. And they, they are just, they're like, I don't even know what to say. Like, they're like, I'm not the kind of person that really thinks about this kind of thing. But suddenly I have two and I never had two. One was a whole set of keys, Renee. That's crazy. How is that possible? So you know what stuff- I'm going to do? I'm not, I'm not tuned in now, but mm-hmm. I am going to ask the guides about this. Yeah. And then I'm going to do a follow, a little follow-up to this podcast, you know, about, yeah. about this, because this is so fascinating. Like I what is happening? What is happening? And yeah. if people are, I mean, and then, okay, now to go even further down and add another couple of woos, <laughs> what about all the alien ships, I'm, I kid you not, this is the news, that are looking at the war in Ukraine, that are all hovered. Have you heard this? Yet? I have not. You no. haven't? Oh, my gosh. I have seen lots and lots of social media around all of these ships that are supposedly being detected by the Ukrainian government and by NASA. That. There are un- there are UFOs and they're just huddled watching the war. Wow! I-, I would love someone to debunk that. I haven't. I granted, I haven't spent a bazillion, you know, a ton of time trying to debunk it because it just comes up like on my TikToks. But a lot of them, a lot of them, and and being, you know, a grant. Granted, this is how wide conspiracies spread. I'm not trying to do that. Please, whoever is hearing this, do your own digging. But what is that like? I've, I, I've seen it enough that I'm no longer just going, oh, that's a joke. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that, oh wait, I'm like, what? Alien? Yeah, I, I don't know. So I don't if know. there was something in astrology that explained this, some yeah. plan, a bunch of planets retrograde or a certain aspect of something, could yeah. you even guess what that might be? Yeah, I would look at, and, and it has been a hope of mine and a guess on other people's part that it's Uranus and Taurus. Okay. Uranus, we call, I call that alien energy. So if you're, if you're an Aquarian, you're ruled by Uranus, you're an alien. Like you probably feel like you don't fit in all, all these quirky things about Aquarius. And I always talk about people with heavy Aquarius having like long antennae that go all the way up and can bring in alien meaning new ideas and new thoughts and new um, concepts and thought forms that to our collective that aren't already here, fresh material, fresh meat, right? So that's how I interpret Uranus. And so when Uranus has a good aspect with your chart, you might have great new idea, brilliant idea, you know, it rules intervention, right? So bring that down to earth in Taurus. Taurus is the earth. Taurus is what's real, what's what you can physically touch, what you can measure, science, what you can see, what you can, that you know exists in the here and now that's Taurus. So I feel like Uranus going through Taurus is bringing that to us. And then that right now it's been, it's over now, but it has, there was a conjunction with the North node, Uranus and the North node in Taurus, North node being destiny. So a point of destiny, a moment of destiny. Wow. Those two, you know, that's, that's, that's very easy to read in the, in the astrology right now. 
So granted, what ca- what came of that? Suddenly, all that stuff became declassified. Suddenly, all all of the evidence that they've been holding back from the public has been opened up and released. And all of now pe- regular pilots and people saying, describing, and there's been documentaries on TV. And so I feel like that was that North Node point. Fascinating. And so now that's, ha- you know, and then Uranus is still retrograde. Uranus goes direct. 12223. Oh, 12223. I love that number. <laughs> when you're honest, goes direct, then who knows? We there might be a moment. You know, I don't know. That's going to be at the beginning of the year. So we'll we'll check back in, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, there, there's lots of, I mean, I love that, you know, I love this stuff, but I do take it with a grain of salt, but it's just interesting to know what this is, is these are. This is the the information that's traveling through our collective unconscious right now. Right. And everybody is ready for the next big thing. Yeah. Intelligent life. Like everybody, granted, I'm I'm sure I couldn't get everybody to admit that, but you know, it, there's a lot of fear around it. But aren't we ready for the next thing? We're ready for the next thing, whatever it may be. Whatever it is. This, yeah. Whether, I am even done with this alien. chapter. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Even if it's not aliens, <laughs> then whatever that looks like. Yeah. We, we, we have some moving to do and we have some, but it's not going to happen this quarter. Okay. Well, good to know. Yeah, yeah. So we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves right now. Everything's dying. Everything's dead. <laughs> <laughs> everything's going backwards. Everything's in the re re We're re We're doing all our re Yes. Yeah. We don't, but we want to be in the moment. We want to be here now. We want to let it all happen, but it's great to be excited. It really is great to be excited. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's been a while for some of us, you know, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's always, always so fun talking with you. Thank <laughs> you so much. Um, as you know, Deb is my personal astrologer and um, for years now, years and years and years, and you can work with her too. Just go to her website, debranorton.com. And just a reminder that I also am having a 50% off sale through the 26th, through September 26th. So you can take advantage of that for sessions, gift certificates, packages, you name it. So thank you. Thank you, my dear. Always good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Bye-bye.